Hi, everyone. Today, I'm going to read you a story called The Seven Silly Eaters. It's a story about a large family. There are seven children and a very patient mom who they call, who's called Mrs. Peters. I don't know her first name. And the struggle that she has trying to keep all these silly eaters happy. She calls them silly eaters. We might call them fussy eaters. <laughs> Anyhow, let's, let's listen to this story. The Seven Silly Eaters by Mary Ann Hoberman, illustrated by Marla Frazee. What a beautiful house they have, isn't it? It looks like Mr. Peters might have built it as I see the tools laying around the yard. <clears throat> oh, and Mrs. Peters plays the cello. Not so long ago, they say, a mother lived just like today. Mrs. Peters was her name. Her little boy was named the same. Now Peter was a perfect son in every way, except for one. When Peter was just one year old, he didn't like to have his milk served cold. He didn't like his milk served hot. He liked it warm. And he would not drink it if he was not sure it was the proper temperature. When Mrs. But Mrs. Peters didn't mind. <clears throat> she was a mother, sweet and kind. And when his milk spilled on the floor, she patiently prepared some more. She'd take the bottle from the shelf and chuckle softly to herself. What a silly sort of eater is my darling baby Peter. When Peter had not yet turned two, another baby sweet and new <clears throat> was born dear Lucy, small and fair, with big blue eyes and curly hair. But long before this child was grown, she had opinions of her own of what she'd eat and what she'd not. She hated milk, both cold and hot. And warm was worst of all. Instead, whenever Lucy Deer was fed, she bellowed for pink lemonade, not from a can, oh no, homemade. Looks like Lucy's really yelling loud there, isn't she? I can almost hear her. But Mrs. Peters did not mind. She squeezed each lemon to its rind while mopping milk up from the floor and patiently preparing more. She'd take the lemons from the shelf and giggle softly to herself. What a silly pair of eaters are Lucy Deer and Peter Peters. <laughs> now Lucy grew and Peter grew till there was three till he was three and she was two. And who was one? Why, little Jack, with eyes so brown and hair so black. A happy baby, never cross, but all he'd eat was applesauce. Peeling apples by the pound, Mrs. Peters faintly frowned. She'd take the apples from the shelf and murmur weakly to herself, what a silly bunch of eaters are Lucy, Jack, and Peter Peters. Peter, Lucy, and young Jack had another brother named Mac. Mac was charming, round and plump, but if his oatmeal had a lump, Mac would dump it on the cat. Mrs. Peters hated that. But since she loved her children four, she'd strain the oatmeal two times more. She'd take it from the pantry shelf and mumble sadly to herself, what a foolish group of eaters are all my precious little Peters. <laughs> it looks like they're getting into all sorts of mischief. And I can't remember the name of the little boy at the door, but he's got snowballs and it looks like he's throwing them at Lucy. <laughs> Poor Mrs. Peters has a lot to deal with. Before another year was through, who came along? Why, Mary Lou. She was darling, sweet and bright, and had a healthy appetite. 
That is, as long as she was fed soft and squishy homemade bread. Poor Mrs. Peters got no rest, but still she did her very best. She'd take the flour from the shelf and mutter feebly to herself, what a fussy bunch of eaters are all my lovely little Peters. Sure looks like a fun house though, doesn't it? With toys and blocks and kittens and all sorts of fun stuff all around. Even though it's kind of a mess, I like it. <laughs> a year rolled by, the children grew. They really are a splendid crew, sighed Mrs. Peters, piping pin, pinning pins and diapering brand new twins. Little sisters, quick and smart, impossible to tell apart. But Flo liked poached eggs, Fran liked fried, and if she mixed them up, they cried. Tired to the very bone, Mrs. Peters groaned a groan. She'd take the eggs down from the shelf and whisper weakly to herself, what persnickety young eaters are my seven little Peters. Now time went by as time will do, and as it passed, the children grew. The problem was that as they grew, their appetites kept growing too, but not their choice of what to eat. Each child continued to repeat. They wanted what they'd had before. See Mrs. Peters fixing everything that everyone wants in all these pictures. The trouble was they wanted more. <laughs> She's finally frustrated. <laughs> she has waited a long time before she got frustrated. Creamy oatmeal, pots of it. <clears throat> homemade bread, and lots of it. Peeling apples by the peck, Mrs. Peters was a wreck. See all the kids outside looking in the window? I think they've decided to stay out of the kitchen today. Too bad they can't help Mrs. Peters clean up. <laughs> she wiped her brow and heaved a sigh. Another year was passing by. In fact, she realized with sorrow her birthday would arrive tomorrow. Drearily, she shook her head and wearily went up to bed. She thought the children had forgot her special day, but they had not. At crack of dawn, they all began to carry out their secret plan. Mrs. Peters would be fed a birthday breakfast in bed. A breakfast made of all the foods that she kept, that kept them in such happy moods. Let's see, it looks like Peter's the one making the plan, but I'm not sure. Everyone's listening very attentively. And they look excited. It seems as if they all share one room. So while their weary mother slept, down the stairs the children crept. And from the cupboards and the shelves, happily they helped themselves. Cheerfully they chopped and stirred, preparing what they each preferred. But despite the pains they took, oh, <coughs> oh excuse me, <coughs> oh, excuse me. I live in Connecticut and the trees are blooming and there's lots of pollen, so I'm sneezing. I apologize. I'm going to start this page over. And cheerfully, they chopped and stirred, preparing what they each preferred. But despite the pains they took, since nobody knew how to cook, to measure things or make them hot, the more they tried, the worse it got. First, Mac's oatmeal turned out lumpy, which made poor Mac turn grim and grumpy. In fact, the lumps got him so cross, he dumped them in Jack's applesauce. This bothered Jack so much, he threw it in the dough of Mary Lou, who tossed the mishmash that that made straight into Lucy's lemonade. And that put her in such a huff, 
She poured the icky, sticky stuff into the double frying pan that held the eggs of Flo and Fran, who flung the hodgepodge on the spot into the milk in Peter's pot. But when they saw what they had done, they wished they had never begun. They'd hardly slept a wink that night, and still things hadn't turned out right. And even though they tried their best, it hadn't worked. They were depressed. They'd be in trouble too, unless they found some place to hide the mess. The oven seemed the perfect spot. They all forgot it was still hot. They stuck the pot inside and then they all went back to bed again. What a mess. The clock struck six, but on they slept. Meanwhile, their mother softly stepped down to the kitchen and smelled a smell. What could it be? She could not tell. It smelled so good. She sniffed some more and opened up the oven door. She woke the children with her cries. They all came running in surprise. And in the kitchen, what they found was Mrs. Peters dancing round. And in the oven, no mistake, a pink and plump and perfect cake. And as their mother danced with glee, she cried, a happy bir a birthday cake for me. A birthday cake still piping hot to think I thought that you forgot. Now tell me, please, how did you make this pink and plump and perfect cake? So high and light and smooth as silk? It's smooth as silk from all my milk, said Peter. Lucy said, it's pink from all my lemonade, I think. And from my apples, added Jack, and my oatmeal made it soft, said Mac. And my bread dough, too, said Mary Lou said Fran and Flo, as for the size, it was our eggs that made it rise. Then everybody sniffed some more and danced around the kitchen floor. They put the cake upon a dish and lit the candles. Make a wish, the children cried, before you blow, and Mrs. Peter did just so, and what is more, her wish came true, as birthday wishes always do. And from that day to this, tis said, the, fam the Peters family all is fed a single, simple meal, just one, a meal on which they all agree, made from their secret recipe. They all take turns in mixing it. They all take turns in fixing it. It's thick to beat and quick to bake. It's fine to eat and fun to make. It looks like with everybody helping, Mrs. Peters can finally get back to practicing her cello. And it's nice to see Mr. Peters is in the kitchen doing the dishes. With a big family, everyone has to pitch in. It's, it's Mrs. Peters' birthday cake. So that's the meal that they share every day now. What fun. Huh. I love that story. I hope you guys liked it. Mrs. Peters was such a patient mom. Not easy feeding six, seven kids that want something different. I love the way they remembered her birthday. And the cake turned out to be the meal everybody loves. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I'll be back to read to you soon. Have a great day today.